Hi guys, welcome to Easy Terrain Builds. My name's John, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build rock stacks with industrial stairways to help fit in with any of your other industrial scenery that you've already got uh, instead of boring old ladders and things like that. So like my other rock stacks video, what we do, we start with an MDF base, cut out best you can with whatever measures you've got. Uh, I use um, a Dremel saw to cut it out, and then I use the Dremel to level around the edges of it. Uh, and again, I use the trusty white foam. You should be able to get this in most packing materials you can find, either the white foam, extruded foam, anything but polystyrene, because polystyrene really gets messy when you start cutting it up. So talking of which, I get my trusty knife. Always be safe with the knife cut away from you. And then also what we need is an MDF staircase set. So what I've got here is the Art of Water Studios. Um, 90 degree stairway set and it's really nice because it's got all these sections that are easily cut out you can easily cut them down to size so if you want to shape it to any height which you'll see what I do in this video because I don't want um, I don't want all the staircase bits touching the ground we want some of the rocks uh, protruding with a staircase coming out of it what I'm going to start to do I'll cut this out um, put it together and we'll go from there so here we have the staircase, it comes in three sections, so we've got the tall section, the lower section and the 90 degree platform section, which is really good, uh, unlike other MDF staircases, this is actually in multi-sections, so it's a lot more flexible, we do a left hand bend, right hand bend, straight, and you've got this top platform section, I'm, I'm actually only going to use the actual the, the platform bit, not the um, not the actual reinforced section below it. So what I want to start doing first is measuring up on the base where we're going to locate everything. I want the very end of the lower staircase being right on the edge of the rocks because I want it looking like the rocks are starting and the staircase is starting. So what I'm going to need is my main terrain piece that it's going to connect to. So obviously the staircase has got to go somewhere and I've previously made uh, industrial walkways and things attached to rocks. Um, so I'm now measuring up the height. I want to make sure that the edge of the rock and the platform don't hit the edge of my rock on the right, but the staircases meet, so I need an overlap. So I'm just making sure all three different sides of my plate, terrain piece. But what we've got is a slight level imbalance. The staircases are actually higher than my platform, which looks terrible. If I left it like that when I actually put it on the model, it wouldn't line up at all in that. To me, <laughs> you've got to have a bit of symmetry, haven't you? So, yeah, that would really bug me. So I'm going to have to cut down that higher piece a little bit to make sure it is level. But the lower sections are fine. So I've got an approximate idea of where I want that first lower platform to be. So I'm going to mount that platform onto the foam. And I'd say this is probably the trickiest part of the whole project, really, because you've got to get that platform absolutely perfect otherwise when you come on to put the lower and the upper sections of the stairs they won't line up so I know where my platform's going to be so I'm going to mark it on the MDF so when I take it away and I put the foam on I know where it's going to go back to yeah I'm about happy with that so I'm going to add my foam on and I've now got to work out the height so I know the location but we've got to make sure the height so the lower stairs can come up and meet it, so we're a little bit low here. So what I'm going to do is take another piece of foam and just cut a section, a small slither off, and try and bring the height of the platform up a, higher, a little bit higher. So cut through there, and then you can just be rough at the moment. I'm just going to take maybe 10 mil, cut all the way through and then place on top of my original section and make sure the platform height is is better than it was. So let's get back to level. So all pretty much that's spot on. When you glue the foam in it's going to compress down a little bit anyway so if it's slightly higher that's not a problem. If it's not perfectly level again when we glue it in place we can sort all those little snagging points out there. So now we're going to cut the foam down and just make sure we only need the width of the platform for now and then we're going to build it up with more foam later on. So I'll quickly cut through, level everything out and then just start gluing in place that first section. And at all times during this point I'm just 
constantly making sure the staircases are level, it's in the right place, small adjustments. I mean, the hot glue gives you a little bit of flexibility, um, but only seconds. So if you do mess up, you've got to be pretty quick to uh, remove it. So get the stairs in place, get my platform in place, glue it down, and you can see they're pretty much spot on with the height. Quite happy with that, and the staircase, the upper staircase is still in the right place. Which brings us on to the next, uh, probably second most important key part of this uh, train build. So we've got the lower platform in place, but now we need to arrange the stairs. So I need to cut off that lower, that front uh, lower support strut and the rear one. And I would imagine I'm building the rocks up eventually to get to that top. So only some of these sections are going to stay in place. It's only thin NDF, it's only sort of two or three mil, this stuff. So you've got to leave yourself. Um, a little bit of leeway when you're cutting these sections out because you can snap parts if you're not careful. So I'm going to do some precise cuts now uh, and get to the point where I'm happy that I've got enough support structures in place that will attach to the rocks but not too many. So I need to make sure I'm about right happy with that so to duplicate that I'm just going to put it on top of the second side of the stairs and again just mimic that, cut it through, making sure I've cut through the right places. Uh, it's not the end of the world, you could uh, you know, PVA glue sections back on, but you're going to lose a little bit of the structural rigidity the more you do snap. Um, so yeah, I've lined those two up, and I'm going to dry fit now the lower stairs and just make sure everything is in place um, where I want it to be. So there we go, nice and uh, level with uh, my terrain piece I'm going for. And what I've actually noticed is the level the lower support structs actually a bit too low so I'm going to cut a few lengths of those off um, so when I build the rocks out um, those are going to hit in the right place and not too low so the rocks don't dip down and dip up again because that would just look a bit odd so I'll chuck that bit of foam on so I know that again one section I'm going to cut off glue on and then I know from previously when I put the platform on I need another slither up to go up so I've got the hot glue gun again, ready to go. It's great having the hot glue gun, it's so much easier, everything is nice and quick. So there we go, a little bit higher, and I think we'll be about right. Once again, I'm measuring up with the train piece just to make sure everything is in place. Again, it's important to note here, I've not actually glued the stairs themselves in place, but it gives me an idea of where everything is in proportion to when I build up the rocks. So I'm going to be going nice and vertically from this section on. So I can start cutting, gluing, and then building up uh, nice and high, as high as you want to go really. Let's throw this into super fast forward mode and you can see uh, the process I use to actually build up the rocks. Just It's very simple with the hot glue gun. Cut, glue, cut, glue, move stuff out of the way. Now I know where those staircases are going to go. Uh, and it's just a process of going from here like my other rock stacks projects. Um, Packing foam is so easy to use, and at this stage, if you were using polystyrene, there would just be a mess everywhere. So, this stuff's great. And here we go. We're about at that height. I'm nice and happy, and we're going to start shaping. So, again, bringing back the big bit of terrain scenery that we're going to measure up for. We know, look, we're about the right height. Happy with that. So, now I'm going to get my knife, uh, make sure all the staircases still fit. Yep, happy with that lower piece happy with the higher piece but then yeah we're just going to shape up because at the moment uh, what I can see is that the rock is going to actually possibly butt into the side of that train piece so if I bring that back and try and push the stairs uh, those upper sections are just in the way so and because it's still edges so that's going to be the focus of where I'm going to start cutting because I don't want it to finish it and then move it up to that train piece and it just gets in the way so let's get the knife out and start slicing and dicing so this is probably the funnest part of the build where you actually start to really start creating the shape of the rock try and make it as natural as possible some nice overhangs just trying to cut off all those um, 90 degree angles from the foam because it is square foam not difficult just a little bit of time consuming it's pretty easy as it is an easy train build uh, we're not expecting to get the hot wire cutter out and shape it that way. The knife does more than a good job. And when we come to the filler, uh, again, we can forgive a lot of any flat edges or flat faces that we've left. We've overlooked the filler actually is a very good 
uh, equaler of that. So now we've finished the shaping, we're going to come on to uh, another crucial bit of installing the lower stairs onto rocks and building up the rocks underneath it. From my experience, it's a lot easier to remove the staircase and build the rocks rather than glue the staircases in and build the rocks around it because you can never then get underneath the stairs to paint or down the side of the stairs to paint the, the upright stack. It's, it is a bit of a nightmare. So what I like to do is remove, keep the stairs removable until right at the end uh, and then glue them in place. So we're going to just strip down these stairs and then do the same process with the upper stairs we did of cutting away those um, reinforcing bits and start adding on the, um, the rocks. And then you glue all that down with the hot glue gun again. Well up to the edge if you can. Uh, and then we're going to exactly mimic that again but with the upper staircase. So we're happy with the lower, spin it around and then start working through the same process with the upper staircase. Again a little bit tricky, it's almost perfect anyway just to start building up more of the edges and go from there. And if you've seen my other rock stack video you'll know we just use a cheap filler and we just start absolutely pasting it on everywhere we can, breaking up those straight lines and just slowly working your way around the model. Again this is probably the most time consuming stage other than the shaping of the rocks uh, but once you get this done it is, it's very rewarding so just work your way through it guys. And when we get to the side stairs uh, we're going to build up the filler quite thick because we when we put these stairs on we want to push down and make a bit of a recess into that filler because when it dries we can then put the stairs back and it'll just slip straight in place so I'm just going to take a little bit of time put a bit of filler down and just push it in you can see it actually sticks in place and make sure it still does level up with that other terrain piece of ours and then it actually stays in there quite nicely you could even leave it for about a minute it takes a long time to dry filler anyway I just want to make those recesses nice and firm in place and then peel that off and that will dry nicely. So here we are, all done, and I just want to still make sure my staircases do fit at this stage, even though it's dry, it took a little bit of wiggling maybe, but yeah, it's still pretty much uh, exactly where I want it to be, so I'm fairly happy with that one. Uh, and then I'm going to chuck the top staircase on as well, make sure that one fits as well. Yeah. Happy with that, but they both actually sit in place. And then I'm going to take my fine sandpaper, and like the other rock stacks, we're just going to go work our way all the way around it, make sure we take off all the extra sharp areas. There we go, nice and smooth, still got a few overhangs there, a lot of detail left when we do our dry brushing. And once again, I'm just going to make sure my stairs really do fit. At this stage, it'd be a right pain if it didn't, but uh, happy with that. And let's move on to spraying it black, like that, and there we go. I've used Halford's matte black spray paint, cheap, nice and easy to use. Give it maybe two coats, one to cover everything and one just to come back and check because there can be some of the white filler still peeks through. So just have a look out for that and give it another spray if you need it. And then let's move on to the next stage, the stairs. So for the stairs I'm going to use just two paints really, Iron Hand Steel and Reza Rust to do my rust effect. You might have a different formula for making your own rust effects and that's fine. Uh, we just, at this point it's so much easier to paint those stairs because I kept them separately. So paint them over any way you want uh, and we'll go to the next stage. But if you want to follow mine, uh, yeah, two metals, mix the two together, 50-50 to begin with I would say. Uh, wipe it out on your brush like any other dry brushing effect. Uh, and start putting it on. You can add a bit more rust at the end if you need to, or a bit more metal. Depends what the absolute effect. You might have a pristine uh, industrial site on your area, but uh, I like to keep it nice and rusty on my stairs. And we end up with this result, which I'm fairly happy as it matches up with a lot of my other industrial terrain, uh, which is all rusty, as you've seen in the previous in the video. So now let's chuck it on the rock, and it is looking good. I'm quite happy with that. Quite a nice rock rusty effect so we've got to move on now to the next stage of dry brushing the whole rock. So I'm using my XV88 as, as I have done in my other uh, YouTube rock sack video and it's just a case of dry brushing it on, gently going around the whole rock. We've got a nice dark undercoat so it's just a process of lightly going around with that brown all the edges, try and miss the actual uh, metal platform at the moment, don't paint that, paint that rock, 
because uh, we'll come back and uh, rust that up as well. And you can see it's just catching all those ridges and edges, working your way around, nice and patient. Don't go too strong with the uh, brush strokes, otherwise you'll leave an unwanted effect really on that. Um, so next, there we go. Whole thing's now brown. Black's coming through a little bit as well, so that will be, be good for the shadows later on. But you can see um, it's not just uniformly brown. That's not the effect we want. So next, I'm going on to the Kislev Flesh stage. Again, in the other Rockstax video, you can see the colour schemes I use. Again, you can use whatever colour scheme you use. You want Mars, deeper red. And again, it's going over lightly on that, and it brings us up a lighter shade here, as you can see. So it's not all just brown now. We're getting a bit of the black, a bit of the dark brown, a bit of the lighter shades. But we want to go one more shade higher just to really catch the edges and the ridges. Uh, and that's the Upshabti bone. Again, really fine highlight on that. And that just brings us up a little shade there, which we're very happy with. Um, last stage we're going to look at is the platform itself so we can't forget about that we've got to rust that up and the little um, the safety rails don't want to forget about your safety rails safety is everything <laughs> in, a, in an industrial area so yeah make sure you've got those sprayed up and there we go all in place now glued in place and I'm very happy with that overhanging staircase that's going to fit really well into all my Necromunda industrial terrain um, and it's actually a lot higher than some of my other pieces I've been working on. So let's have a look at this, what it looks like um, with some other of my terrain. Yeah, you can see here it fits in well with this other piece I've already got, and it's a good alternative to the long ladders that they supply in those Necromunda terrain kits. There's no stairs, but it's nice and flexible. You can add it to multiple terrain pieces, and you can actually make... Once you've got this basic set done, you can then make more of them in different shapes, different sizes. With your staircases, it's whatever your choice is, really. I've got three here that I've done now. Uh, two are 90 degree left hand bends, and then one's a right hand bend. This is, this is actually the first one I made. I always make a practice piece. Uh, and it actually turned out quite small, the rocks. I wanted something a little bit bigger. Then this piece, I actually made the staircase through a rock which was a nice change, a bit more cover as you're going up the stairs. And then finally here it all is together with a few other bits, some separate rocks, multiple train kits, and it's looking good. I'm happy with that. So thanks again for watching guys, and if you like this video, please leave a like, chuck us a comment, see how you've been getting on with your own builds, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Happy terrain building.